You are listening to Pyro Media Network, setting brands ablaze since 2017. We are back with another episode of the Unusual Mavericks, the podcast. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure you guys tune on into our live show on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Unusual Mavericks Live. I'm your host, Kwame, joined by the handsome, the melanin proficient, the bearded one, Jess Dominic. What is going on? Kwame, and hello, everybody out there. We are so happy that you enjoyed our first episode. So yes. we're absolutely looking forward to continuing our series. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning on in. And also, shout out to all of you guys that have been listening to the Unusual Mavericks podcast. Our first two episodes um, were a hit. So thank you so much for the over 6,500 listeners and down or listens rather and downloads uh, on our podcast network. So shout out to you guys for doing a thing on thing. Um, let's get into episode three of the Unusual Mavericks podcast, and we're going to be covering the X-Men 97 season finale, uh, episode 10. As you guys know, episode one, we did episodes one, or reviewed rather, episodes one through five, and then um, on episode two, we reviewed episodes six through nine, um, and today we're going to be talking in full depth about episode 10, which was the season finale entitled Tolerance is Extinction Part 3, um, and not only are we going to talk about this episode, but we're also going to kind of give our season overview commentary over everything. So, in this episode, um, just want to let you guys know, there is a spoiler alert. So, um, this episode was directed by Chase Conley, written by Bo DeMaio and Anthony Saletti. Uh, shortly after Magneto critically injures Wolverine, which was insane, uh, Xavier uses his telepathic powers to override Magneto's mind and shut down the EMP. The Prime Sentinels are reactivated and continue wreaking havoc around the world. Just as Bastion prepares to execute Cable, Jean reemerges as the Phoenix. Shout out to Just Dominic for um, that pre-prediction that he had in the last episode. Uh, but Jean reemerges as Phoenix and places the collar on Bastion, immediately deactivating the Prime Sentinels. She then takes away Sinister's powers and control over Cable before the Phoenix Force disappears. Bastion rips Cable's cybernetic arm and merges with it to upgrade himself and fly towards Asteroid M. Upon his arrival, he is confronted by Blue Team, Meanwhile, Xavier struggles to save Magneto's mind. Gold Team arrive on Asteroid M in a commandeered uh, Sentinel to join Blue Team in the fight. Cyclops tells the X-Men to stand down before he attempts to reason with Bastion. But missiles launched by the U.S. military bombard Asteroid M. Bastion is killed by the core reactor's uh, explosion as the asteroid descends back to Earth. The X-Men use their combined efforts to uh, stop the asteroid from crashing on the east coast. Magneto regains consciousness and sends the asteroid back into space before it explodes, presumably taking him and the X-Men in the process. Six months later, Bishop pays Forge a visit and tells them the X-Men are trapped in time. Cyclops and Jean end up in 3960 AD, where they encounter Mother Ascani and a child, Nathan. Meanwhile, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Beast, Xavier, and Magneto find themselves in ancient Egypt in 3000 BC, where they meet En Saba Nur. Y'all know who that is. Dominic, what a freaking episode. What are your thoughts on um, just kind of what we talked, what this episode was, like your thoughts on it overall. Okay, so I took a few notes, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> this episode was so unbelievable. I had to watch it back to back twice. So there were so many, so many 
so many X-Men references and connections to different X-Men that it was just super excited. We got a Emma Frost teaser. We got an Iceman teaser. Onslaught was kind of taken out and cut out of the comic books as a reference, which was super cool. We saw Silver Samurai. We saw some of the Avengers. Daredevil did two cameos. We saw Peter Parker and Mary Jane. They had a cameo, which was so cool. Doctor Strange had a cameo. As you said, the Phoenix Force had a cameo. Uh, Black Panther had a cameo. Cloak and Dagger was featured in this episode as well. Polaris was featured in the cameo. Scarlet Witch, uh, Quicksilver, Omega Red, uh, Crimson Dynamo, Dark Star, Psylocke, Reed Richards, Rachel Summers. As you said at the end, uh, when they went uh, forward in time, uh, Rachel Summers, uh, that woman that they were uh, introduced to was their daughter from an alternate reality, which was really cool. Of course, we got an Apocalypse cameo. We saw Apocalypse Moonbase, which was super cool. And then we saw the DeMeo Diner that was also represented in this episode. I love how they keep saying that uh, where um, I love how, what do I want to say? I just love how they put this episode together, basically. It was just ingenious how they just put everything together. Even Bastion's upgrade was straight out of the comics. It was yeah. so cool. And yeah. then Magneto lives that line that he said was also taken out of the uh, comic books. So they're calling this the 90s universe. That is what this universe is, is being referred to as, is the 90s universe. And I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And then Beast ending the episode overall with, oh dear. So the references that I saw was the second coming if, if mm -hmm. folks are interested in reading that comic book, you want to check out The Second Coming, you'll find a lot of this. Fatal Attractions, there was a lot of the Fatal Attractions storyline. When Gene and Cyclops went back, uh, well, not back, when they went to the future, that was pretty much taken out of the adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, that storyline. And then The Blood of Apocalypse, that storyline was all intertwined in this episode. It was so amazing. Yeah, this oh, was a fantastic say. episode. I I want to I want to kind of go through some of the um some of the highlights. Like um uh I know at the beginning um we saw you know first of all everything that happened with, with Wolverine was insane, right? And then um Xavier going in um uh uh and 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 touch. We're getting some background noise from you, uh, Dominic. Okay. Um. So you know, one of the things that I, I really um in, uh enjoyed um uh with oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> one of the things that uh it's, especially in the beginning we saw that Xavier what, what everything that happened with Wolverine um and then all of the animantium being like kind of stripped from his body with uh, Magneto and he he was gonna stop um and so uh. You know, Xavier did what he felt that he needed to do, which was like get to him and stop him. Um, that was insane. And and Magneto kind of begged him to not do it, but it's like he asked you, girl. He asked you not to not to do it. Um, you know, but you you kept going. So, you know, he had to do what he felt like he needed to do to protect Wolverine and protect his team, um, and ultimately protect Earth. Um, and so like I really enjoyed um the fact that like they just their dynamics, their relationship, um, as they were kind of going through it, which we're gonna touch on in a little bit. But um, I all really um I did not think that we were going to get the Phoenix Force um in this in this in this season. I thought we were probably going to get its own isolated season. I didn't think that we were going to get it, but this was it was amazing to see that uh come about. Um and also I don't know if you guys remember or if you remember Dominic, but like in the um original animated series, the Phoenix uh, or Jean fell from the sky into um the ocean and then rose from the ocean um as the phoenix and so it was kind of like that again where it looked like she was done like she was on um and she rose from the water um 
uh, as uh, as the Phoenix uh, again. So that was kind of dope. I really liked how uh, they did that, and I also liked how it didn't look like um, with the outfit, like the 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 Phoenix outfit. She was just this kind of entire fire bird, um, which was really really dope. So um, what what are your thoughts on on, on the, those portions of everything and how everything went down with that? I loved it. It was fire and water mixed together. Yeah. Uh, the Phoenix essence or connection that she has to the force is pretty awesome. And, and, you know, I know it's kind of taken a little bit from Star Wars with the force and all, but I love the way that she was able to, uh, the Phoenix was able to take all of the mutant DNA out of Sinister. That was a shock. And the shady way Morph said, this is what you look like. That was hilarious. Yeah. And that was so cool to me. Like, I, 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 I really I don't know what that was, but that was really, really dope to me. Like, I really enjoyed uh, seeing that, like, how powerful, like, it was like, oh, this is a different level. Like, that was cool to me. Um, and, I, and, and it almost seemed like she leveled up, too. You know what I mean? Um, at least with the yes, control yeah. of the Phoenix. So yeah. that was actually really dope. Um, let's get to, uh, the part, so let's get to the deep dive of everything. Like we read everything that, you know, that was all synopsis of everything. Um, Bastion, you know, it was inevitable that he was going to go. So I don't really want to get into that, but I, I really like how, so we think. um, so we think, right. <laughs> exactly. I really loved how, um, we, um, there were some innuendos. Uh, uh, in this, and I want to ask a question to you. Um, now that you know, is it well? Is it oh? Before we get to uh, um the the this overall season commentary, I want to talk about um like that you said the ca cameos and everything, which was really really dope. I really enjoyed seeing Doctor uh, Strange. I really enjoyed seeing the Avengers. I really enjoyed seeing Spider Man. Um, Psylocke is is uh uh low key one of my my, my favorite. She, well, not favorite. She's the, one of the most interesting to me. Um, so that was really cool. But seeing all of those cameos, like, really, really made me feel like, okay, we're not going to stay in this, like, universe of just the X team, um, which I, I, I really enjoyed because we're going to be able to see more and, and, and all types of different mutants, which was really, really dope. Um, but at the end, seeing um, um, Ansaba Noor, um, for those who don't know, is Apocalypse was insane to me. Um and seeing the split screen, or not split screen, but the but the, the hidden the, the the hidden gem at the end, the very, very end, um, and seeing Apocalypse like kind of be there in real time, but they're back in time. Like this was just a really insane type situation. I wanna know though and how they said. got there. So, and what he said, right. Um oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I wonder Apocalypse said oh, I, so I know. much death. I oh I know what Apocalypse. I'm just saying oh dear to that. <laughs> but um I want to know how they got there. That's what I want to know. Like I, I want to know like what caused all of that to to like for them to have a time warp. Like what brought them to those times and what separated them. Um that's gonna be interesting in the next season. So um what are your thoughts about seeing um you know Ab um uh Ad Sabanur? Um, as well as, the, you know, uh, Mother uh, Ascani and Nathan. Well, I thought it was really cool. As I said, I didn't call her Ascani. I referred to her by her her biological name, which is Rachel, Rachel Summers. She is the, I guess, uh, in an alternate reality. Uh, she is the daughter of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. Instead of yes. them having Nathan, they had her. So I thought it was really cool how they brought in a variant of their child uh, right. in, and then young Nathan. It's like your whole family is together. How cool is this? That was right. really, really cool to see the whole Summers family together. The only people we didn't see is Scott's father. We saw him in the original series. Yeah, uh, but we have not seen him. We, I assume, he's out in space somewhere working with the Shi'ar and you know, all the things that he was doing. Uh, but it was really interesting to see the Summers family represented in this way. Absolutely, Apocalypse. Yeah. I thought that ending scene was so cool, and the way he said so much death, 
it just to me was a teaser that Gambit is coming back as one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, which he should. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he should. Yeah. He should. I was really excited about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really, I just really enjoyed all of this. This was probably, this was the best episode of uh, the season. Um, just really well done. Um, yeah. Now, now, um, let's go to, let's get to our season overview. Uh, what were some of your favorite moments of the overall season? Some of my favorite moments was, of course, the first in the first episode, I really enjoyed the Sentinel making the announcement to the entire world, Omega level threat detected. That was one of my favorite moments. Yes. And the power and the regalness that Storm had. And this was before she leveled up. So she was Omega level before she even leveled up because we saw what she regained her powers and sense of her power, she was able to tap into it even more and have more control and confidence. So that was one of my favorite episodes uh, for sure. The uh, Genosha episode was shockingly, stunningly, sadly beautiful. To see Genosha fall the way that it did, to see Gambit fall the way that he did. I, I always felt that he never had a spotlight throughout the entire original se uh, season or series. He was always there, but the, yeah, you didn't really love Gambit and you didn't really hate Gambit. This ep That episode really yeah. showed how cool he is, how much he loved Rogue and his team and what where his values really alive. So I really enjoyed that episode. And the whole three-part finale to me was equally as good. All three parts were really, really well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I um, some of my favorite moments was obviously when um, all of the storm moments. Um, I do agree with you. Uh, when the Omega level threat uh detected happened and just kind of storm just coming out the gate, um, just letting people know that she is that girl <laughs> you know uh in the first episode was needed um we need it we need to set the tone of how powerful she was we need to set the tone of who she was and, and a proper uh representation of her um and how she just single-handedly took down all of those dang on um sentinels without needing the team's help um that was needed. Breaking a sweat. yeah without yeah. breaking a sweat you know um and also um uh when she regained her powers that was such a powerful moment um uh you know uh i felt like she needed i guess i resonated with that because how many times have we had those moments where we feel like we're we're not enough or we feel like we're 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 not you know we, we hear the, that that negative thoughts in our head or the devil's in our ear you know telling us you know that we are not um, good enough or were not uh, uh, worthy enough. And for her to kind of summon all of that within herself, that she was her own blockage, that she was the only one that could stand, you know, between between her and her her power. Um, uh, she was the one that that stopped herself and that she was so powerful that she was able to 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 stop um, or or retroactively remove all of the stuff that stopped her or blocked her powers in the first place um that was so powerful and she she was saying that it was all a lie that i i know who i am you know and 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 just being able to tap it in that was such a beautiful moment um uh, i also will have to say that genosha uh the genosha fall of genosha uh, episode five was literally the game of thrones episode of the season <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like it was it was yeah it was horrific but it was like it was like oh this is not a kids cartoon <laughs> like this 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 episode was made for those who watched uh the original uh X-Men animated series and who are older who are wanting to watch this current series without it being baby down um they pushed the envelope with that episode and i thought it was it was brilliant um well done um, yeah. um, the yeah. storm episode to me could have used, see the original way she got her powers back is Forge built a gun. He built a gun or created a gun to reverse the effects of the first gun that he built that took her powers away. 
Also, she stabbed him when she found out that he had built the that first gun to take away her power. She literally stabbed him with a knife. That is how angry Storm was. So they that episode was to me more kid friendly with how she got her powers back. Yeah. Uh, with pretty much that believe in yourself yeah. uh, type of uh, narrative that they decided to go with. I thought it was cool to change it from, because I, as I said, I thought that the original way that she got her powers back was pretty dark. Yeah. She stabbed him, and then afterwards they, she fell in love with him. <laughs> so right. It was like a crazy comic book, uh, a re- how she reoccurred. And, and they were in an alternate dimension when all of this stuff was going on, so they were isolated and only had each other. So they really changed that whole scenario. I wish that we could have gotten more story in that, but for what it was worth, and it's only 10 episodes, not 20 episodes or 40 episodes like they used to do. So they only had a a limited amount of time to get through that. So I appreciate that episode as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of our dislikes of the season. Um, Stay tuned, y'all. We'll be right back. know that you can now catch the electrifying sounds of bullet and flight radio anywhere you go yes you heard it right tune in to the high flying beats and soaring melodies by downloading the tune in app on your mobile device just search for bullet and flight radio and hit play it's that easy and if you have a smart device like alexa or google just say hey google or alexa play bullet and flight radio on tune in Experience the rush of adrenaline wherever you are. Listen to Bullet and Flight Radio on TuneIn using your Alexa or Google devices. Soaring through the skies has never sounded this good. Don't miss out on the ultimate musical journey. Tune in now to Bullet and Flight Radio on TuneIn and let the music take you on an unforgettable ride. Get ready to elevate your listening experience. Brought to you by Bullet and Flight Radio. And we're back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Unusual Mavericks podcast. Um, don't forget to check out all of the other sponsors that we've uh, shown throughout our commercial breaks. Also, make sure to check out our sister network, Bullet and Flight Radio, the number one progressive Christian and inspirational radio station in the world, as well as our mother network, Pyro Media Network. Uh, you can go to pyromedianetwork.com for all your pyro needs. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and get into this Um the rest of this uh, commentary here on this phenomenal, phenomenal season of X-Men 97. We uh, we just got finished recovering, or excuse me, reviewing episode 10, Tolerance is Extinction, part three. And now we're kind of uh, talking about the overall season commentary. Uh, We left off with um, some of our favorite moments of the season. And now we're going to talk about some of our dislikes of the overall season. Dominic, you want to go first or shall I? Um, sure, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, my main dislike of the season was that there were only 10 episodes. <laughs> yes. They had so much to unload. I was just going through my notes again about the final and 10th episode and how much they had to put in it. Did you all hear me read how many cameo scenes were in it? Right. How many comic books that they pulled from, storylines they pulled from? I think it was like maybe four or five different comic book storylines they pulled from all season long yes but they really tied a nice bow in this as well maybe the only dislike that i had is that there there was not enough avengers in uh, the season i think if they would have had one more episode they could have truly set up the true civil war that everybody's waiting for and that is the avengers versus x-men or x-men versus the Avengers. It the stage is set uh, from the episode that Rogue went flying off after the Genosha episode and ran into Captain America. You could see that they were to me there were hints that the Civil War was about to be started. Uh, so I'm looking forward to see how that uh, works out because I was shocked to see that they introduced cloak cloak and dagger because they were not a part of any '90s show. In the yeah. past, Daredevil was, uh, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, they all crossed over 
uh, back in the 90s, but Cloak and Dagger were the only ones that uh, were new faces. I'm happy to see them, uh, but, uh, and even Black Panther made mm -hmm. an appearance uh, during the 90s. So it would be, it looks like they're setting the stage for Civil War, but I wish we would have got a few more pieces to set it up for next season. Even though, of course, they're all time traveling, da 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 da, but they're still X Men in the current day. And the Civil War should we should see that um, we should have seen that uh, kind of be set up or established in the season finale. So I wish we could have seen that. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I definitely think that there was an it, it was kind of um interesting to see how they were doing that. So I don't know if they were hoping to because that that would be a really huge season, right? And so um that that probably would take a season long, um, uh, kind of build up yeah. um so I, I i don't know if they they were hoping to do that for season three or they wanted to get season two out the way um and then you know or, or maybe they were just kind of like because i mean i'm sure when bo was writing everything he did you know he was like you know probably thinking well we don't know how well this is going to do um we'll see how it does you know in the first two seasons and then we'll probably yeah. go into that space so i mean i i but i definitely agree but the pieces are there i would love to see more um, uh, pieces uh, come together on that. So we'll see how it goes. And bring back Bo, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, what yes, I, we know uh, what, that season two is in post-production, they say. Yeah. So they're about to start on season three. So yeah. and season four has been greenlit as well. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Now, um, I want to say a couple of things that I, I felt, um, and this is not, this is not a dig towards Marvel or well, it is. <laughs> um, the, 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 it, it's kind of a dig. I I get frustrated and I see this a lot with Disney. Um, overall, um, I see a lot of gay baiting. Um, and 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 what I mean by that is like they just bring us enough to bring the gays into the situation or bring the LGBTQ I plus community into the situation, but then they don't go all the way to give us full representation. And I see a lot of gay baiting, a lot of, of potential shipping of certain characters. And it, it it was cute in the 90s. It's no longer cute now. Um it, it, it's it's okay, like speak it, on it. Right. You know, so it's it's like give it give us all of it or don't give us at all. It's like you you're giving us, you're putting in the tip, but then you're not going all the way in, you know. And so you know, no pun intended. But um the whole situation with Xavier and Magneto. You cannot sit here after watching that episode and tell me that they did not fool around back in the day. I'm sorry. Then you just can't. Like, and if if they did, why don't we just go full out and say that they did? Say that they were lovers at one point in time. Because the way Xavier and Magneto were looking at each other, the way they drew that, it was no, like the way they were holding each other. The way they were holding each other, the way they were looking at each other, the way that it wasn't just friendship. There there was a deeper, intimate love <laughs> with them. Wait, wait. What about Morph and oh. Wolverine? Oh, yeah. I was getting there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That in and of itself, like, come on. Why? And, and what frustrated me is, like, why couldn't he, like, and you mentioned this on, um, on the Unusual Mavericks Live, why couldn't we just have a situation where it was just Morph telling him how he felt instead of him having to transform into Gene in order for him to tell him how he felt? It's like you have to have a heterosexual or heteronormative situation in order for you to, 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 to be okay with it, to kind of smooth things over. That's not cool. And then you're gonna you're gonna wash it away and say, oh, he was just doing that to keep him alive. He, they don't really love each other. Yeah, they do. Something's going on with. Well, I don't know if it's each other, but Morph definitely is digging, um, uh, 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 Wolverine. And another thing, you brought this up on um on the Unusual Mavericks live. Um, uh, I kept saying he 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 because in the in the nineties, Morph was uh depicted as as a dude, but Morph is actually gender non-binary. Um, and so the, he doesn't have a gender, um, which is number one cool because it's it's gender nonconforming, and and I love um, uh, that fact that they 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 brought that aspect of uh, the community into the show. But at the same time, we need to let them know that they are were were in love with Wolverine, and if that's going to be a thing, let it be a thing. 
Like, are we going to explore that? Or were you just going to tease us like you did in the 90s? So that was my issue with it. Not knocking. And and, and I also thought that Bo, and I don't, I don't know, maybe it was politics. Maybe it was something that he couldn't do. But, like, maybe he could not, he wasn't able to, um, to, 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 to do all of that, you know, and maybe he wasn't able to go to the, those lengths yeah. to, to, to express, you know, what he really wanted to do. First of all, he's a gay well, black he, dude writing, you know, the show. He, and number he sure two, went far with the Magneto and uh, Xavier hello. thing. Hello, that, was... that 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 uh 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 thruple that was going on with that. I mean, but Gambit looks like a freak enough that he would have allowed. Like they all could have had each other, <laughs> but you know. But I, <laughs> I don't know. Who knows I, what they were doing around that mansion, honey? Okay, that mansion was getting a little, 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 little crowded, a little freaky. Uh, but you know, that's here nor there. Um, I just wish that they would have taken the time to go further in in that aspect. So that bothered me a little bit. Also, I don't like it when we give a character who's not really that cool and not really needed and completely unnecessary just to justify and just to kind of shut some of the fans up, you just give them some type of level up. Jubilee has always been a waste of time. I don't know why Jubilee was in the original one. I don't know why Jubilee was even created. She was a waste of time. She, I did not, never identified with her. I never, and I, I don't know if it was just because, oh, you just want to add an Asian into the situation. I don't know what the reasoning was for Jubilee being in there, but the whole firecracker thing, girl, it's not that serious. You didn't need to level her, uh, her up. And the episode that, that with, the, uh, with Mojo, I just didn't understand why we need to see a future version of her that was like this like super badass version of Jubilee. It was not that deep. I don't like Jubilee. I stand on it. I'm a part of the Jubilee hate club. I just don't like her, and I just didn't understand why she was a part of the series. We could have left her without well, her. You know, I'm I since she is a part of the 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 legendary show. She is. We can't erase history. She's a part of it. I'm glad that she was a bit more useful in this episode. It's about time that she steps up a little bit. Sunspot has just been on the scene three minutes, and he was kicking more tail than her. That's so what I'm, saying. I'm glad that they finally decided to step her up uh, within this last episode. She she needs to step up or go sit down somewhere, go have some some another career, go get a hobby. It was just so I'm glad that they they made her a little bit better. So you know they're trying to make her interesting. I think Bo and the and the team are they really did their she's best to make her interesting. Not interesting, she's not interesting at all. Leave her out of it. I could do without her. I don't want her anymore. I'm done. I like her and Sunspot together. I think this is the most effective she's ever been. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I would, I would, I would throw her a bone. Trying, I'm trying to throw a bone at her. Like I just don't want her in the thing. I, I would have rather, I would have much rather seen, um, uh, go in depth with Nightcrawler. You know, I love Nightcrawler. I think he's such a, a, a interesting character. Um, uh, just like just really a dope character in in the in the series. I would have rather, you know, seen more of him. Um, hell, I would have rather seen more of Beast. Um, but anyway, that's here nor there. Um, yeah. those are my some of my dislikes. Again, I also agree and and want to echo what uh, Dominic said about it not being long enough. But again, I also understand why they did that because you know Marvel has not been um they haven't had a good track record with their series, so we don't you know, we we didn't know if this was gonna make it. But this oh. ba basically saved them. So yeah, and they gave them a two season or twenty episode. A contract. So yeah. whatever yeah. they were doing, they were going to wrap it up into say seasons. As we know, Bo has already written the second season. The second season has already been uh, filmed. They are in the last few touches of post production. It is totally ready to go. And they say that they are about to start working on season three this year. So they're going to have two seasons in the bag. 
very shortly. We know how long animation takes. Yeah. So the good thing is because the seasons are shorter, they can come out faster. They don't have to work on a 40 episode season before it comes out. It's 10 episodes. Right. 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 So we know the next 10 are done and they're about to work on, you know, obviously the other 20. And we'll see if they give them only four seasons or I think that they should give them a good 10 seasons. Just go ahead, Marvel, and give them 10 seasons. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And bring back Bo DeMaio. That's another thing that I disliked about the season that we we I don't know if we're gonna get Bo back. You know, because you know Marvel's really stubborn. Marvel doesn't listen to the fans. Um, and and so you know even though they say that they do, they don't. You know, we ask you to do better um series uh, or give us better series, especially when it came to like you know you gave us obscure people that would, had nothing to do with the overall universe. Like we, I would have loved a deep dive into Thor. I would have loved a deep dive. You could have did a side. Uh, like you could have did a Wakanda series, which you got rid of. You were going to, but you you got rid of. But before Moon Knight, before all of these other obscure pl- things, you could have did stuff that happened with the with the characters that were already in the series. But you didn't listen yeah, to. We it. know Bo Bo did Midnight, Moon Knight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Moon that's Knight, fine. Midnight, Moon Knight. And it yeah. wasn't bad. Moon Knight wasn't bad. It just didn't make any. It just wasn't a part of the overall. Like it was just a random character. So like it wasn't I bad. Wish- I wish they would have did Midnight Suns instead of Moon Knight. I yeah. wish they would have did Midnight Suns because he would have been a part of that anyway. Yeah. Blade and, and so many other cool characters. So, yeah. Like that could have been the third. Doctor Strange was not the best movie. That could have been the Doctor Strange movie. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been dope. But that's, I mean, they made it a video game. <laughs> so there's that. But, um, but you know, I, 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 that, that is a big, point of contention for me like i'm really nervous about season three um uh i don't know um what it's gonna look like and i've gotten so accustomed to this first season now um that i have high expectations for the second season and so it's gonna be really disappointing um if the third season is not on the same par as season one and two and i think at that point if it's not i think they would lose me as a fan um, and I and I honestly feel like they would lose a lot of other people for, as a fan as fans, um, and it would take a big hit to to Marvel. I mean, they're already taking hits and uppercuts and gut punches all you know all this time. So I don't know, I don't know. I totally agree. And then just knowing that it was a part of Bo's plan, also it sounds like to bring back the the '90s uh, Spider Man. Yeah. series he also talked about the daredevil series that was greenlit a lot of fans don't know this I believe there was a pilot done but daredevil did not get picked up so there was an animated series in the 90s of him as well so there were there was going to be this whole 90 universe that bo was going to bring back and i agree with you season three and season four are currently being written as we are already talking about and uh, going in production soon it is going to have a different feel than the first two seasons. Let's just face it. We yeah. know that a lot of the people who worked on the first two seasons will also be carrying on, but Bo was such a big influence. We saw that in all of the credits. And um, he was very active, very vocal on social media about the direction and what he wanted to do with this. And he had such an effect. The Bo DeMeo effect is real. So yeah. we'll see what it feels like once... You know, season two goes off, and then season three is something completely different. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, what uh, what does X Men ninety seven mean to you, Dominic? Well, X Men ninety seven throws me back to reading X Men as as a kid, the comic books as a kid. To me, it always represented civil rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was very important to me. That is why I really absolutely loved uh, each character, Xavier and Magneto, especially Storm. She always was a diplomat and presented a lot in the comic books. If you read some of the old comic books, she is just doing her Martin Luther King. I give a I have a dream speech every single time she opens her mouth she was extremely motivating about uh inclusivity and uh love and compassion and those things so x-men 97 i believe even in the titles that uh they were named the the episodes were named they they all mean something and they're all talking and addressing uh, 
our differences and getting along with each other and loving thy neighbor. So X-Men has always represented that to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, X-Men for me, uh, X-Men 97, uh, you know, just piggybacking on everything you said, for me, it, it, it's been, um, that's what made me a Marvel fan, X-Men. Um, the original, um, the animated series. Um, I've always been, I was introduced to DC Comics. I was introduced to those comic books. And I had some um, uh, uh, Marvel comics, but most of my comics were DC. And so when I um, saw X-Men and I saw uh, Spider-Man um, and all of these cartoons, this was at a time where people were shifting from... Um, comics to animated television and uh x-men was like my real first you know um my generation thing i was introduced to voltron and all these other you know shows thundercats uh and still i'm a fan of those things but um they didn't come during my time and so x-men 97 was my generation and 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 or sorry not 97 x-men uh, uh in the 90s the animated series was my, my generation what my generation grew up on um and so for me it, it was like a, a a a place where i started seeing stuff within myself and who i was as, as a human and and um parts of myself that i was trying to hide and um because of fear of what the, the world was going to, you know, think and how society was going to view us. And I felt like a mutant. Right. And so I felt I, 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 I gravitated towards the X-Men because they were, even though they were fighting for um, that, they were being, you know, ridiculed and they were being um, ostracized and oppressed. They still fought for equal rights for everyone. Um, and equality for everyone to include those that hated them. Um, and that's what kind of like, in, you know, your prior service military as well, uh, uh, Dominic, that's something that I've grappled with for a long time. How do I, as, as a black uh, gay man, you know, move into this society and, and, and navigate um, life and try to defend a country that hates me? at times right and so um it, it just kind of shows that the amazingness that that was the x-men and what it stood for um and even our civil rights leaders what they stood for they were being oppressed they were fighting for not only their rights but also the rights of those um who were being oppressed overall um and 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 against a system uh, and a power that that uh, wanted to keep them down so i really um uh resonated with um x-men 97 because I felt like it brought in and it, it included not just, you know, um, race, but also sexuality, orientation, um, uh, just being a human in and of itself. And so, yeah, gender, yeah. all of that. It was so it was so beautifully done um, and it was such a great continuation of the story. Um, and, and, and I think um, as a. Um, as someone who's, uh, you know, as we're fans of this, this also brought in others. Because I, I was looking on Facebook um, a couple of weeks ago when um, right before uh, episode five came out, people were that had never even watched X-Men or, you know, were getting into X-Men 97. So it brought in a bigger crowd, not just um, those who were already Marvel fans, not just those who were already into X-Men, not just those who were already blurs and nerds, um, but it brought in people who were just like, oh, this is a cool cartoon, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and it brought in people who, you know, are were just watching um, Disney Plus for their kids um, because Disney Plus is still a huge fan base for um, their fan base is you know has a huge fan base for younger uh, kids and then we're not talking about teenagers we're talking about like babies you know and toddlers and, and all that stuff and so um, the parents are going to watch certain things too on there so um, that them getting involved in that too was really really dope so uh, it, it turned into a, a, a bigger situation I thought it was it was great um, I thought I thought that that is what um, these type of shows should be doing for people bringing in bigger fan bases. And so I, I, I think I have high hopes for um, X-Men 97. I think I have high hopes for where it's going to go and how it's going to, you know, grow. Um, and I, I think that this is the best um, thing that Disney plus um, and Disney really has put out in a long time when it comes to the collaboration with Marvel. So uh, congratulations on it. That's what, that's what it means to me. That's, <laughs> I know I'm rambling, but yeah. yeah. No, no, you're fine. And and uh, one other thing is that mm -hmm. Disney has lost 
millions of subscribers yeah. over the past two years because of their lackluster uh, content. Yeah. So we'll see if people keep Disney Plus now that X Men '97 season one is over. I'm going to say for me, I'm going to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Why pay for something to, that I really don't use? Yeah. I know that Star Wars material is coming on, but it's been reported that it's also lackluster. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to suspend my services until season two starts. Yeah. I bet you a lot of people are going to do the same thing. Yeah, I I think I'm probably going to keep it for another month just to kind of get, you know, watch, you know, X-Men 97 over and over again for a little bit. And maybe uh, the original, um, some of the other Marvel animated shows like Spider-Man and, and the original and X-Men. Um, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to keep it because I don't watch anything else on there. There's no other reason that yeah. I've gone on Disney Plus other than X-Men 97. There's re- literally right. no other reason. Um, I don't exactly. even go on there to watch the movie. So it's like... I don't see a reason for it. So, um, and a lot of the stuff that is on um, now, what I may do, what I may do is uh, get rid of. Well, I don't even want to get rid of Hulu because I feel like a lot of the stuff that is on. Because um, uh, I thought about like, well, I don't need both um, because X Men ninety is X Men ninety seven even on Hulu? No. Okay. Yeah. So uh, unless they do that, like, uh, I don't see a reason for me to keep. Um, because everything that's on no, Hulu, Disney movies, their movies now, Marvel movies are on Hulu, but not yeah. their animated series. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see a reason for me to. Me keep neither. It. It's, there's <laughs> no reason for me to keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye. yeah I don't see. <laughs> I don't. I'll probably, like I said, I'm probably gonna keep it for another month, um, just to kind of, you know, get the remnants of the nostalgia out. But I, I'm not going to. Um, I don't see a point in in, in keeping it. I'll maybe reactivate if something, you know, pops up that, you know, we need to watch or whatever for a review, but I don't see me keeping it long term. There's, there's not a reason. But yeah, that's going to be it for uh, me. I don't got nothing else. You got anything else, Dominic, before we go? No, that's it for me as well. All right. Well, this was a phenomenal season. Um, One of the best. <laughs> <laughs> that has come out from Marvel in a long time. So shout out to Bo DeMeo. Uh, shout out to all of the the the, the team, uh, that the directors, uh, uh, everybody, the animation team, everybody over there at Marvel who brought this together. Um, all of the collaborated teams over at Disney. Um, so shout out to y'all. Y'all did a good one on this one. This was a, a dope one. But don't make mistakes. Um, <laughs> we got we got we got to we got to we got to you know bring back Bo. But that's that's all I'm gonna say on that. It's been fun. It's been real, y'all. Y'all have a great, great one, and we'll see you on the next episode. Stay blessed, stay stress-free, and stay unusual. Stay unusual. Bye, y'all. This episode is brought to you by Pyro Media Network, produced by Pyro Media Productions, setting brands ablaze since 2017. Thank you for listening.